Which brings us to the third law of thermodynamics. In the third law of thermodynamics, we specify where zero is, essentially. And we say that the entropy of a perfect crystal would be zero at the temperature of absolute zero. So the entropy of a perfect crystal of any pure substance will approach zero as the temperature approaches zero. And after that, then you can start counting. You are only counting upwards. Since you are only counting upwards and entropy can only increase, this results in engineers saying that the third law of thermodynamics is you can't get out of the game. Once you can start doing this counting, then you can use measurement. You can put a certain amount of heat in and then see what the temperature is and you can start creating tables of entropy values that you will be able to use. Now let's go back to Boltzmann and we're going to do a little bit of mathematics, some combinatorics. If we have gas atoms, and we're going to simplify this by saying that it's a two-dimensional surface, okay? They can only be in these little boxes. So only one atom per box, but you have more boxes than atoms. Hence, you can consider it to be a sort of a gas. W would be the number of microstates, and it's how many ways can we put those atoms into the positions that we have available to us. It doesn't matter, there's no difference between individual ones. So we end up coming up with a formula which uses the factorial symbol in order to express what's going on. If I have n atoms and I'm putting them into m different positions, I'm going to come up with this number of microstates, m factorial over n factorial over m minus n, factorial. So here's an example where we're putting 22 things into 64 places. Symbolically, it looks like this. And if you were to work this out, you would end up with this number. But remember, S is defined as Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W. When you take the natural log of this, you get a much smaller number then, and you end up with something semi-reasonable for an answer. Now, when we do this, there's a few caveats that we've, we've put in here. We're saying that only position matters. We aren't worried about the momentum, how fast it's moving. In other words, this is a really good uh, way to approximate what's happening in a crystal where things aren't capable of moving around very much. It's a good way to deal with a snapshot. In physical chemistry, one of the things that they show you is how to mathematically treat it, which is only good for pretty small numbers. As you start doing very big factorials, your calculator will say, I don't know what number to tell you. It will get too big too fast. But in PCHEM, one of the things that we do is show how this could be scaled up to a different set of equations that are used for large systems. Let me do another combinatoric one. Let me do a simple one. Let's say that I have two items and they have to go in six positions. I wanna know what W is. Well, I would take the six and say factorial. I would take the two and say factorial. And then I would say six minus two is four and factorial. And then I can just write them down. There's six factorial, two factorial is this. 4 factorial. Oh, look at this. Those are all going to cancel with these. Then you could cancel here, and you'd end up saying that the answer was 15. So this is how you would do a problem where there were very, very few items. And this will help us understand why things do what they do. Why does a gas decide that it's going to fill the whole container? If we look at W, the number of microstates, we can understand that. If the gas was only in half the container, then there would only be 32 possible places it could be for these 22 items, and you would end up with this number. But if the gas fills the container, there's now a lot more places it could be, still the same number of particles. We end up with a different value of W, and we see that S is larger. 
And since it's just a natural law of the universe that entropy increases, of course, it's going to do this because entropy increases if it fills the container. Here's another one. Why do they mix? If they weren't allowed to mix, you would have two cases. On this side, 32 slots with 22 things in it. On this side, 32 slots with 22 things in it. But if they're allowed to mix, then we end up with 64 places where the first 22 items could go. And we have to multiply that by the number of places left. So 64 minus 22 would give you the 42. There are still 42 places where 22 things could go. And when you do that, you're going to end up with a much larger number. And once again, we see that if we start here, this entropy is larger. So this is how we explain why things tend to mix.